Ian? Ian, where are you? Where's he bloody gone? I'm supposed to be here, meet Ian, and uh, have a little chat about wildlife and field craft and what to do and where to go. But uh, I've turned up at the appointed time. He's always late, but um, he's nowhere to be seen. It's like the blooming Mary Celeste here. Oh my God. Are you looking for somebody? It's the abominable <laughs> blooming compost heap. <laughs> Holy hey, are you looking for somebody by any chance? Uh, there you are. Well, <laughs> here I am. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. Talk, talk about taking things to extreme. <laughs> well, you know me. <laughs> I do indeed. And you've got a picture oh, of me there. I have, yes. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> welcome, everybody. <laughs> welcome to Ian Robinson's IR Photo Tours, and we're going to do another last session of this particular format format of uh, gear and what you need and not particularly what you need but it's what we've we've used yeah what we've used over the years yes yeah and and, and how to look a prat <laughs> how to look a prat in the field <laughs> awesome Stuff Robinson. <laughs> I'll tell you what, all laughing aside, that has got me some fantastic photos. Oh, I know, I know. We're going to be talking about field craft, aren't we? Yeah. And we're going to be talking about camera gear and what we've used in the past. Yeah. And let's start with when did we first meet? Oh, a lot of years ago. 2010, something like that, eight years ago. Oh, nine years ago. Oh, it's nine, years nine years ago. Nine years ago, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's a long time. Yeah, and we met doing the wildlifey photography thing. Yeah, didn't we? we and, certainly um, did. We hit it off, and uh, whew, the rest is history. <laughs> uh, yeah. And yeah. Uh, what do we? Uh, and can you remember what gear we used then? So what was I using those days? Yes. I what think were you using? I was using a one D Mark Canon one D Mark four. Yes. And a three hundred f two point eight is. Yeah. And lens, and more often than not, with either a 1.4 extender on, giving me 420 mil, or a two times extender, giving me a 600 mil. Okay. And uh, I used to like that because it, okay, 300 mil is a chunky bit of lens. Yeah. But at about two and a half, three kilos, it was manageable. Yeah. And easy to manoeuvre, and I did. I used to wish and pray for a 600 mil, but I had 600 mil with a two times extender. Minor loss of resolution, maybe, but I used to like that. Quite, mm. quite enjoyed it. And what did you have? I had a Sigma 120 to 300 mil f 2.8. That's right. Um, and what did that you was a new on? lens for Sigma at that, at that particular it, time. It was, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I remember you having your 300 mil prime and thinking oh do i go here or do i go there and i i kind of went into our local sweetie shop which is <laughs> yeah, called yeah. Wex well. photography uh, okay, yeah let, let, let's just get that one out of the way yeah. we're not sponsored by anyone this is all off our own backs and this is we, we do this for for fun for fun for um, fools and <laughs> <laughs> to to enlighten maybe other people that don't yeah. know about the gear that you use or in you wildlife use, or yeah. what you can use yeah. you know and and how you can evolve even um, yeah yeah well you know. this is that this is our evolution in wildlife yes photography and photography yeah yeah, yeah, yeah isn't yeah. it yeah. and then i added the sigma two times converter onto that mm. to extend to 600 mil yeah. uh, and i got these cracking shots of the bar now mm. um, with that lens yeah <clears throat> but I am going fast forward a little bit, but it was with that lens, but with a second camera that I had, which was the 5D Mark III. Ah, right, yeah, yeah, but you had, when, I when, did when we met and when you first had that lens, that was a 7D, wasn't it? The Mark I 7D, yes. Canon 7D. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I had the Canon 7D Mark I coupled onto that lens, 
And as you know, as a wildlife photographer, crop sensor, yeah, great to a degree in the fact it's cropped. You know, when you think about the megapixels of a 7D Mark One, that was what, 18 megapixels, I believe. Yeah, yeah. That did tend to be very, um, very noisy as a camera. Mm, yeah, well, the 7Ds are renowned for their noisiness. They, they were, they yeah. were. But if, if right. you're short of money and you're just delving into wildlife, yeah, but it's as a good, we were. Yeah, well, I mean, 7D, well, 7D Mark II now, and possibly mm. when they do a 7D Mark III, we don't know. But that is a good, if you're moving up from a, a standard Canon, bog standard camera and you want to get into wildlife or you know you want mm. a faster shutter rate and stuff, that's a bloody good camera. Yeah. Yeah. Bloody good even, camera. Even the 7D Mark one. And, with, and uh, you could get rid of the noise. Yeah, and with the crop it. factor you get a little bit of uh, yeah. extension, a narrower, depth of, uh, narrower field of view. Yeah. yeah. So you think you've got a longer lens than you actually have. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But my, uh, mind you, my 1D Mark IV, that was 1.3 crop. The 1D series, the early ones, were 1.3 crop. Yeah. Of course, all, I've had a more full frame. Yeah, actually, you have. I've, I've had all the five Ds. You had one Ds. Yeah, I went 1Ds. Yeah. I started at 1D Mark III when I went up to the 1Ds, mm. and then 1D Mark IV, then the 1DX, then 1DX Mark II. Yes. But strangely enough, for me wildlife now, I'm on a 5D Mark IV. Mm. And you enjoy that? Yeah, I like over it. and above the One DX Mark II. Yeah, well, one uh, I'm because I'm old duffer now. <laughs> it's lugging it about, and um, the One DX Mark II is just a stunning camera. And if you know, you, the reason it's a professional camera for both press, sports, and wildlife, and anything in between, is because if you want the shot, if you're a prof professional photographer, you want the shot. That mm. One DX Mark II is going to get you that shot. It, high ISOs it doesn't give a monkeys mm. you get a brilliant shot mm. and that's what it you know if you're being paid to take the shots yeah. you want that shot but it doesn't matter to me because I do it for fun and 5D Mark IV brilliant 30, 30 megapixel sensor full frame fantastic quality mm. seven frames a second is good enough for me yeah and because we're your... because we're so experienced we've mm. been doing this for so many years mm. It's not about a high shutter rate. Can be handy yeah. when you get that little moment that mm. makes the difference. But you understand your subject. You learn about your this. subject and you yeah. anticipate yeah. and away you go. High shutter speeds didn't worry me, even when the 1DX Mark I was out. However, I did buy the 1DX, as you know. Um, yeah, yeah. For a short stint. Yeah. And, and I found that I wasn't using it that much. So. Mm. Because of the size of it and the bottom. Yeah, well, that's the trouble, isn't it? Um, is you, you, I mean, I found that the, the thought of going out and lugging all that stuff yeah. about, I mean, this is, bear in mind that this, by this time, as things evolved, we we both ended up with each having a six Canon 600mm mm. F4L IS, yeah. the Mark One IS version. Uh, just short of five kilos. Oh, no, yeah, just short of five kilos, I think. Yeah. Um, and oh, stick a one one D series camera on that, you've got six six and a half kilos. Yeah. And yeah. To th the thought sometimes of going out, oh let's go and do a bit of wildlife. Oh god, I love that. But think about when Unusual. you're going out to do wildlife and stuff. Think about the the motivation. Yeah. Um, yes, with a six hundred mil or any of the Canon super telephoto lenses, you can get stunning images, mm -hmm. and that's where the you know, the bucks count. Yeah, Stunning yeah. image quality and the separation of subject to background and a beautiful diffused yeah. um, bokeh. Are you willing to fork out that kind of money? Fork out that kind of money, yeah. And, and having forked out that down. money, lug it about. Mm, we? So we went from, I wouldn't say down there because actually no, 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 we no, got no. some cracking images and I got, oh, funny enough, I got, I got that one image. Um, that won me two competitions. Was that the bar now? That that was, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Over the ribs. Well, there it is. Yeah, yeah. That one. Um, that yeah, one. that one. And that, yeah, that, that won me two image. competitions. Yeah, yeah. And a, and a camera that I yeah, yeah. didn't really need because I had the, yeah, the gear. Yeah, but it was nice to be. Nice to be. That, can you? <laughs> no, no. It was uh, uh, chuffed to bits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good point. Yeah. And sort of emphasises what we've been prattling on about. Um, you don't necessarily need. The, the best, 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 yeah. best gear out there. Yeah. It's very often 
right place, right time. Fieldcraft. Fieldcraft. Concealing yourself and understanding your subject. Yep. Uh, Before I got that Sigma, I only actually had a. When I say I only actually had it, it was a Mark II, the 70 to 200 mil. Yeah. Which is that one there? <laughs> yeah, the F28. F28 yeah. IS. Yeah. And, you know, that, that was an absolute fortune. That scared me because they're 1,800 pounds basically, aren't they? Or mm. were. Yeah. I don't know what they are now. Well, the Mark III version is two grand, isn't it? Is it? Oh, well, there you go. Yeah, so, yeah no, it's so always it's actually been a gone really up. ridiculously yeah, expensive yeah. lens. It has, but Cracking what a lens. And versatile as well. And versatile. Yeah, yeah. So I used to stick, to get the reach, I used to stick a uh, two times. Two times on that? Uh, Mark III, which really coupled yeah, 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 well yeah. with the Mark II. Yeah, yeah. Um, you didn't get any no. real slowness. You, di you didn't really no, see it because it wasn't. Big it, was, bosh. it was yeah. absolutely really cool. The thing about short, slightly shorter focal length, well any focal length really, but any, it's, it's how far you are away from your subject. Yes. So anything you can do, even if you've got a 600mm lens with a 2 times extender working at 1200mm, anything you can do to get closer to your subject will improve the image quality. But if you're, I don't know, 100 metres away from your subject, yes you'll get a nice shot, but there's a lot of, depending on the atmospheric conditions, yeah, there's a lot of stuff between you mm. and that subject. Yeah. Atmospheric. And that atmospheric bits yeah. of stuff floating about in the air, and you're going to get a soft image. A soft, rubbish image. You will. So yeah. get yourself as close to your subject as you possibly can yeah. for the actual superb. Couldn't results. agree more. Could not agree more. That then goes back to the funny moment earlier on Fieldcraft. Yeah. yeah. And that's the only way you're going to get close to your subject. Yeah. Birds, wildlife, they have a boundary yeah. point. Yeah. And when you cross that boundary point, bang, they're off. Yeah. Never ever yeah. had a moment where I could be that close to a wild animal in the wildlife and got really that close to it without some form <coughs> of camouflage, camouflage concealment. or concealment <coughs> or field craft <coughs> even. Yeah. You know, it's yeah, just, yeah. Yeah. that all comes in. Uh, I mean, that actually raises a good point, Well. Further to that point, of points. <laughs> you might want to stick up on behind us this photo yep. of Barn Owl that I took. Okay. And that was taken with my trusty Canon 100mm, oh. um, 100 to 400, F4556. This is the Mark II version nice. with the twisty, twisty zoom, um, which is now my go to lens for wildlife because it's relatively light compact and easy to maneuver. Anyway, I took this shot of a barn owl with this at a hundred mil. I didn't even extend it yeah. because I was sat in the blooming reeds and the barn owl didn't mm. know I, take, I, I was there until I clicked the shutter. Mm. And as you can see, he's looking at direct eye contact. Mm. Bing bang bosh. Yeah. Got it. Feel proud. 100 millimeter lens. Who needs 600 mil yeah. if you're in the right place? Exactly. Right time and hiding. Right. Early morning is always is good, isn't it? Yeah. That nice early morning, early morning wildlife. thing, nice cold, cool, yeah. crisp mornings, yeah. lovely atmosphere. Bit of mist on the nice water. Clear. Very nice. You Very know, there's nice. been times where we've been at Strumshaw Fen, for example. Oh, God, yeah. You know, six o'clock in the morning, we up there, aren't we? Yeah. And you've got the mist yeah. on, on the water and the birds. Oh, oh beautiful. Lovely, isn't it? Absolutely yeah. stunning. I found with the Sigma and the 5D Mark III that I had, I could be like that. Mm. I could get the shots. Yeah. And it, I didn't need the frame rate. Yeah. I could be off a um, tripod or a yeah. monopod. Yeah, but like the same, you know. Yeah, exactly. 100, 400, it's extended to 400. Yeah. And Walk I around. can hold that with one hand. Yeah. All right, after a, an hour or so. <laughs> it's a bit heavy. Yeah, but, but you could have a strap you on know, your shoulder. Easy peasy reasonably light, fantastically hand-hold manoeuvrability and you can just get the shot. Yeah, exactly. Well. A dirty, great, big <laughs> monster. And this is, I don't know if you can see that on that one, this is Canon's 400 f2.8 um, IS Mark II. So this comes in at 3,850 grams. Right. So 3.8 Kilo, so uh, mm -hmm. under four kilos. Um, may I? You may. <laughs> God, it's still, but it's not too bad. It's not bad. 
but that is still it's a big waiting. lump of dollar. Yeah. So if you're, you know, I mean, I've, I can hold it and you can do, you can. but I prefer yeah. to use it with a monopod. Yeah. Stick a 1.4 extender on, you've got 420 mil at f4. Stick a two times extender on, of course, you've got 800 mil at f5.6. And again, with this lens, lightning fast autofocus, even with the two times extender on, and crisp and sharp as you like. Makes no damn difference, absolutely brilliant. And can I just ask, what was the um, two times extender? What mark was that? Mark three. Unbelievable portrait lens. Cool. I mean, it is. Yes, uh, I can, stunning. I F two eight four hundred mil. The bouquet on that. Have you done any? Yeah. Well, I've done it with my dogs. <laughs> Have you got any pictures? Uh, yeah, I've got one of uh, Charlie. There you go. There you go. One of my mutts. Excellent. One of my mutts. Excellent. So you've you done that with that? With that, yeah. Excellent. I've done quite a lot of work with the dogs with yeah. that. Yeah. Because, uh, well, you can see. Lots of dogs as well. Is that, that that's your setup to to date? That is what, I, what I'm, you know, that's what yeah. I'm using now. But um, what a perfect setup, really. Well, I, I quite like it, but yeah, I'm sort of thinking on the lines of I'm now not using much, making much use of this mm. brute of a lens, so that might be going. Mm. So anyone, because I mean, uh, uh, so you know, the last. Well, no, 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 we're not doing a selling. No, 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 no. But, no, no, no. but for anyone that is watching that's interested and knows Trevor, how much is it going for? Oh, I don't know, about uh, six grand. Six grand. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. But well, there you go. That's ca that's case. Flight, how much was flight it? case box? That's interesting. Nine and a half. Yeah, that's bargain. Man. Yeah. That's um, bargain. Flight six case. Grand. Flight case box. Wow. Original package in all the bells and whistles. Yeah. All. The, bits and bobs and, and, you mint, after you give, and with the coating yeah. on from day one yeah. so it's never had a yeah so anyway it's a mm. nice nice bit of gift but yeah, I'm, I'm seriously thinking about um, saying goodbye to that and just mm. using this yeah. wildlife has always been part of your yeah well, we heart, always keep you know, coming back you to, always it, come don't back we? to it yeah yeah at that time the 600 mil f4 and, and the one the canon X, one yeah, yeah i got rid of them, rid of them because i just wasn't using it i no. wasn't i wasn't heavily into wildlife at the time I'd, I'd moved over and had always been doing um, landscape and actually one of my f pretty much my first images was landscape so mm. you know but I did love and I still love wildlife yeah. and um, so if I was to yeah. pick two genres I think that they would be the two I think. Yeah. I have now and you're seeing how I'm holding it it's not too bad um, that um, my arm's starting to ache yeah uh, but that is a Sigma 150 to 600 mil mm. sport. sport yeah and it's all metal um and no, it's a chunk, of, chunk of lens isn't it it is what's it? the difference between that one and that one what this and uh, this the, yeah what's your feeling it's not much i bet there ain't i tell you what i bet there ain't, there ain't much yeah, i know but i mean for those of you in the know with canon yeah the mark three version of this this is mark two the Mark III version is under three kilos. No. So it weighs really about as much as that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I have actually done landscape with that as mm. well. Yeah, yeah. Well. Um, in the mountains. Mm. So getting uh, around about 400 mil into the landscape is beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, well, you can pick out detail. Yeah. yeah. For the value for money, over and above. Ah, uh -huh. well, that's a different ball game. 400. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you're going to get into wildlife, yeah. this is kind of. The, the one of the lenses that if you're gonna uh, if you if you're gonna do wildlife and start wildlife, I'll probably yeah, if you say sit, if you're sticking your toes in the water, version of that, get, yeah, yeah, which yeah, is about yeah. seven hundred pounds. See how you get on, yeah. And that's you've got a full range of six hundred mil. Yeah, you do get a cracking image. Right. Again, that's a cracking one for portrait because yeah. you can compress that length. You can just get yeah. that compression that makes everyone look so nice. Yeah, yeah. Whereas a wide angle distorts yeah. quite a lot yeah. in, in some respects yeah um and then of course the 200 200 mil which i still use for wildlife occasionally mm. and and macro yeah you've seen me use lots of macro yeah, shots butterflies um, butterflies what do you call it dragonflies, dragonflies. good lens Perfect for dragonflies for that yeah I, I, with this as well that's quite a handy yes. one for dragonflies and butterflies and especially if you put a uh Oh, what are they called? An extender on. Extender. Uh, put an ex yes. Uh, well, put an extender on, 1.4 extender on there. Wow. 
I mean, the background just goes blue. Yeah. It's lovely. So there is one more thing that um, I didn't mention earlier on about equipment. Yeah. And oh. um, it's the bin binoculars. Now, this is these are fantastic. These are these are what are they called? Oh, where's my glasses, man? Opticron, Omnicron, Opticron. They are Opticron. Yeah. Opticron. And these are these specific ones are Opticron 10 by 42, and they are BGA HD WP. If you're interested, <laughs> they're 100, 350 pounds yeah. to buy. But the quality is phenomenal. It's like watching through HD. Let me see. You're, you're going to have to scroll there for your eyes. <laughs> Whoa. What yeah, that's quite good. And they're nice and light. But and lovely and light. I mean, I think the, the, the point we're coming to, equipment-wise, is it is very handy having a pair of binoculars around your neck just to yep. spot the little blighters. Yep. And, so then and then move. Get your get yourself together with your um, with, with your gear. camera. Yeah. yeah, and move in. And if you know, you know, it's also spotting where um, dare I say barn owl nests and things like that. Um, it's okay to spot them, and we covered this earlier on. Yeah, yeah. Um, but don't go anywhere near. Yeah, them. having spotted them, lay down. You and know avoid roughly them. <laughs> exactly, and you know roughly where they're going to be then. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's about understanding. The animal yeah. and the way to do that is by looking first and enjoying the views of that animal and maybe going there two or three times uh, in a week yeah. possibly more even just yeah. to understand their patterns and yeah. understanding where they're going and how and they yeah very often they're, how they react. they're creatures of creatures of habit yeah. like, and you've got a pair as well right? not not these particular ones have you i think you yeah i'm pretty um, sure you've got a pair yeah I, i'm minor blooming heavy things are they yeah. Well, these these Which are really I, no. Nice. I, mean, I was yeah. impressed with those, yeah. but the ones I've got are fairly heavy, and I very often don't bother taking them. But <laughs> now that I'm I'm into macro, I it. don't care. I don't need binoculars for the insects. Well, no, you don't need the binoculars for the insects, do you? No. 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 But anyway. Yeah. There we go. No. Well, the 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 other th point, of course, is although we got all the gear, and we did sort of hit on that uh, point about field craft, yeah. but I don't think we hit on it enough. No, no, no. I think right. I think that's really important to understand your wildlife. If you're getting into wildlife, um, try and understand the wildlife. Yeah. Uh, there are apps out there that you can you yeah. can you know look at. Yeah. Um, I have an app. It's called uh, Birds of Britain, something like that. Um, and and uh, you can you can basically look at the birds. You can understand its callings. Um, and you know you, you memorize it and you yeah. remember those calls especially yeah. after a while that yeah. after going out yeah. and that helps you out with wildlife as well yeah that's part of the field craft yeah but the other part is using them to learn about the bird learn about the calls is yeah. great yeah. yeah yeah and yes you can call the bird and they will tend to come some some of them, some of them. Mm. as a territorial yeah. They will come and investigate who's on their patch. Yeah. That is what that app's doing. So that's not really, that can be a bit, mm, a bit, a bit of a grey area. You shouldn't do it. Uh, you shouldn't really do it. Um, so I wouldn't advise doing that. It but comes to, um, you know, nesting times and Yeah, well, this times time like of year, springtime. Especially when, this time. When yeah. the males are very territorial, very possessive, yeah. um, and you're just gonna freak them out. Yeah, yeah absolutely. absolutely. Nice. Um, and the other thing I would say on that side of things, you know, if, if you think, oh, well, I'd quite like to have a crack at wildlife, um, place to start, find your local RSPB reserve or your local mm. um, wildlife trust, yeah. um, go along to one of their reserves, sit yourself in one of the hides and snap away. And I'd say there is a bit of an etiquette as well in these um, hides. You know, Some people get a little bit upset. upset. Some of the bird watchers who go there to have a little look and peer through their yeah. scopes and binoculars, which they're entitled to do, and it's fine. Um, but they do get a bit upset by people sitting there, clicking away and bags of crisps and, and, and about. So nice and know, quiet, nice and quiet. Respect your fellow bird yeah. watchers, yeah, definitely, and behave yourself. But um, if you like the old hide thing, then that gives you an idea that in order to get that close, you either need to be sitting in a hide or wearing some kind of Concealment, camo, camo mm. or you can get camouflage netting. It really works. It's all about yeah. 
So understanding your wildlife, yeah. understanding how far you can get before um, it, it's disturbed, yeah. understanding um, springtime and what you know, nesting birds and all yeah, that sort behaviors, of thing. Yeah. If yeah. you want barn owls, barn owls are a very um, popular subject. Please, please do not go all the way up to their box. No. Especially when they're breeding. No. That's a bad, bad, bad move. Yeah, I mean, some... Um, some and it's against the law anyway. No, exactly. Some birds are protected. Um, Barn owl is definitely protected. Yeah. And it's, Bats uh, are protected. It's illegal to take a photograph. Kingfishers, to, to photograph a mat at or near the nest. Yes. So, unless you've got a, uh, a license. A license. Um, and most of us haven't. No, so, so just don't do it. Just don't do it. Don't do it. But there's etiquette and there's laws, and mm -hmm. as long as you understand them, yeah. um, go ahead, really enjoy the nature like we have, uh, and, yeah. and enjoy the, yeah. the images, because that's the thing that I love. Yeah. Um, you've got birders that go with their scopes, mm -hmm. um, they enjoy just viewing the bird, and they have it in their memory, and, and they tick it off in a, in a book, yeah. and do that. Um, us photographers, we love to actually physically see it on the screen, and, and enjoy the beauty of the bird yeah. when we get it back home yeah. and that's why we photograph these subjects because we want to actually physically it's a catalogue mm. of beautiful nature yeah. on our screens isn't yeah, it yeah, and not just on our screens but in print hanging on the wall yeah you know so you know yeah, yeah. For, for us it's a yeah. it's a memory yeah of a moment yeah 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 of that lovely yeah. beautiful bird and yeah. I've had some rare birds yeah. before we both have yeah we have yeah we but both have. that also brings me back to that point I made earlier about the 400 mil being my favorite focal length because you can get some of the um, environment in with your mm. subject um, and it's those shots that are more interesting generally to the viewer yeah. and you're more inclined to print and stick them up on your wall as a picture because yeah. it's a pretty picture as yeah. well not just a bird in a tree or stick yeah. on a post absolutely yeah and I think on that note, I think we've covered quite a lot of I think we've wildlife, done, haven't done we? all we need to do. And um, on that note, thank you very much for coming. Always a pleasure. Trevor. Next Lovely time, don't job. hide. Don't hide. <laughs> and and what, what's coming up? Oh! What have we got planned for the near future? What have we got planned for the near you future? You are going to be following me about when I'm doing some I macro am. in the field. So yes. You're going to be filming me, filming the insects. And yes, I, I am. Do. So and we're going to get we're going to get some so macro going on uh, yeah. very soon as well. Hopefully. So I will probably be when next you see me knee deep in cow dung. That'd be good, wouldn't it? <laughs> yellow dung flies copulating Excellent. all over my bald head. Something can't, like that. Can't wait. <laughs> can't <And> wait. Then, <laughs> it'd be knee deep in. Yeah. <laughs> But anyway, yes. for now, it's been a, a lovely, lovely old job. job.